My name is Allison Chris. I'm at the University of Virginia, and I had the honor of being the community lead for host microbiology this past year for ASM's Council on Microbial Sciences, or COMS. And for those of you who are less familiar with COMS, it is a visionary group that's part of ASM. And our job is really to work to identify the future of the science in ASM and ways for the organization to really help support advances in microbial sciences. One of the main ways that we do this is by hosting uh, community retreats. And so this past year, we held the host microbiology community retreat um, in late May and early June and was virtual. And I want to share with you today some of the outcomes from that as we really try to think about and strategize about what the future of host microbiology should look like. So um, in this retreat, we invited the broader community of ASM that identifies as part of the host microbiology community. And we had a number of participants who were very engaged over the three days of our virtual retreat. And they're from all over the world, all over kinds, all their kinds of affiliations and represented um, both early, mid, and later career stages. So we had a very diverse group of participants who all came ready with their ideas and their energy to present. And when, um, we, when we hosted um, this retreat, we invited several visionaries to really help share their vision for what host microbiology could look like. So for instance, we talked about things like philosophically, what are the frameworks that we should be thinking about when we consider how hosts and microbes interact are our existing ways of thinking about these interactions sufficient? And if not, what should we be doing? We need to really think about how we can measure how hosts and microbes interact. Um, are our existing tools sufficient? If not, what do we need? Are we doing this on the kind of scale that we really need to be able to understand host-microbe interactions? And finally, you know, who is, um, who should be, but isn't currently part of the host microbiology community? How do we invite them here? How do we make them feel welcome? And how do we get them to share their ideas and collaborate with us? And so to this end, um, we had a number of really productive discussions. And our major take home conclusion, as you can tell from this slide, is that really the future, the current and future of host microbiology at the American Society for Microbiology is interdisciplinary. We really need to embrace the fact that the work that we're doing now is not just in one specific framework of one kind of cell with one kind of microbe, but there's everything is a consortium. We really need to understand and embrace this diversity. So there's three interconnected topics that I would like to share with you that came out of this retreat. Uh, one is the need to not just understand but embrace the complexity of ways that hosts and microbes interact. Two is the tools that we need to understand this. And three are the people who need to be part of this discussion. So I'm going to share with you now a few of the points that came out of the retreat and I'm delighted to talk with you afterwards about some of these in more detail. So first, we can appreciate that hosts and microbes interact in a number of different ways. And these interactions really depend on where, when, and how these microbes interact with one another. Um, and we need to, under, to be able to appreciate that depending on that environment and in those, with those cues, that mo hosts and microbes are going to behave in different ways. And so rather than the sort of traditional ways of considering pathogens or symbionts, you know, let's consider that there might be alternative frameworks for really understanding host microbe interactions. So for instance, let's apply ecological or evolutionary lenses to really understanding these interactions. We also need to be able to really go beyond just cataloging who's there and go into who's active and what those interactions look like. So, for instance, we need to really be able to appreciate interstrain and interspecies diversity. Uh, I think we can all appreciate that using a single you know, strain of a microbe or a single cell line or a single mouse strain may not be sufficient to capture the complexity of the interactions that we really want. We also need to embrace other ways of thinking about host biology. So, we have all kinds of new technologies coming online, organ on a chip, tissue on a chip, even synthetic hosts um, that we should really be considering as we try to explore host microbiology going forward. A lot of times the interactions between hosts and microbes are stochastic, right? So at any given time, you're never quite sure what the biology is gonna look like. And we can really learn from fields like 
as far afield as, say, meteorology, which has a role of trying to capture the complexity, the, the randomness that might be in the world, and make predictions from it. And so we should really be reaching out to folks in those kinds of fields for this. In order to conduct this kind of research, we really need better tools. And this was a major theme of what we talked about. We need tools that are going to work on the scale that we think about host and microbe interactions and microbe microbe interactions in polymicrobial communities. We need these to be able to measure things on the time frame that we want and the, the, the scale, what we're talking about microbes, you know, micron or less scale. We need to be able to use these in order to um, really be able to capture the complexity of what we're examining. And while we capture a lot of omics data in host microbiology, we have a lot of this data, I would say we're just at the start of, being, of scratching the surface to really understand what it means. We need better, um, better kinds of computational frameworks for mining this data, for analyzing this data, for then applying it into the research environments that, that we're using. And so this is really what then gets to the people. And these are the people up here. One of the days in the retreat, we began with a prompt where we asked people who are participating, who are the under, um, underappreciated, underrepresented individuals in microbial sciences who should be part of the host microbiology community but aren't? And so I think you can hopefully see a number of different groups up here. But really, what we need to do is embrace the diversity of, what the, of the research that we're doing make the, with the data that we have available and the tools we have available, we should be able to make this open to people all over the world at all different levels of, of research. So for instance, can undergraduates in a computational biology introductory course take data that's generated in a research lab from somewhere else in the world, use those primary data to, um, to mine and make predictions, and that can lead to a really fascinating new kind of collaboration. We need to be able to bring in engineers, ecologists, mathematicians, modelers, synthetic, model synthetic biologists to really make this kind of research happen and to go forward. And we also, for those of you who participate in interdisciplinary research, sometimes we have some barriers to communication. Sometimes we don't share the same language. Sometimes we don't have the same goals. And so it's really important that we have the, a very good idea of the big picture of what we're trying to accomplish in host microbe interaction studies, make sure everybody can appreciate that, and then welcome everybody to come to the table with their own perspectives and make sure that we have people who can act almost as translators to make sure that we can talk to each other in an effective way to move that research forward. So I just want to point out that I'm using host microbiology here pretty um, pretty specifically, but I hope that you can appreciate that the topics I'm talking about go well beyond host microbiology. I think this touches all of the communities in ASM and actually even beyond that into all of research. So we had three days of very intense discussions, and so you're probably wondering what happens next. It doesn't end with me standing on this stage, and it certainly doesn't end with a retreat. In fact, in the cycles that comms has for retreats, the retreats are really just the beginning Following from this, first of all, we're going to have a draft report that's being put together. We're going to share this broadly with the host microbiology community, and we really welcome your feedback and input. I'm sure that stemming from this, there are going to be a number of initiatives. We're really trying to be actionable about what can happen next. So there will be opportunities, hopefully through ASM journals, through ASM conferences like Microbe here and other arenas where we can take these ideas and really move them forward to move research forward for everybody. With that, I just want to thank you. I want to um, emphasize that we think of host microbiology at ASM as really the big tent. Um, this is a big tent for interdisciplinary research, an opportunity for all of us to contribute and really push the science forward for the coming decades. Thank you. Have a great day.